What up fam? Currently on a hike. I am in Todd Lake, Oregon, 6,150 feet of elevation. I'm doing a hike today, light hike, because I'm currently injured. Today on this hike, we're gonna talk about uh, ways to cross train when you're injured and the types of cross training that you would benefit most from if you are injured for the sport of running. Stay tuned for this. So in this video today, I'm gonna to talk about the types of cross training you should do if you're a runner and uh, how to handle injury. Once you realize you're injured, you have to accept the fact that you're injured. You have to throw over your head that this mindset that your competition is gonna get ahead of the game on you because you can't work out and they can, not always true. You'll come back stronger. An injury is just your body telling you that, hey, we cannot handle the load or the stress right now. Look at it as something as something you can learn from. The types of cross training you can do in this order, and these are my observations, my knowledge, my experience with the fact, before you guys try any of these types of uh, cross training activities at home, make sure you get cleared by a qualified healthcare provider in your area, because some of these cross training activities, even though they may benefit you while you're hurt, they may aggravate the injured site, so get checked out. All right, so the hierarchy goes. Ultra G treadmill, leveler, or bungee cord type treadmill, aqua jogging, brisk incline walking, hiking, cycling. Remember the law specificity, I talk about that a lot in my other videos, is that if you wanna be the best you can be and have the proper firing patterns of the muscle groups for the activity at hand, which for my channel is probably mostly runners, you wanna do activity that would favor running or mimic the motion of running as close as possible. Running in any sport actually is a lot like playing an instrument, right? Any of you guys out there have ever played an instrument, right? Like guitar, it is hard as hell when you first start but once you get used to it and that that brain mapping your brain can figure out you know proper motion where things are it's the same concept of running that's why if you look at someone that you know just started running and they look like their legs are all over the place they don't look very efficient versus you know a professional runner where they look extremely efficient that is why now we're going to go through each of these briefly on why you would want to do this type of cross training starting from the top and then down the first one i said is the ultra treadmill it's a special treadmill Comment down below if you guys have ever run in one. It's pretty cool. I've done it before when I'm hurt. You can run as low as 20% of your body weight. Basically, you wear these half tights with a zipper. You zip yourself in, pull the thing up. It's like you step in it. You pull it up, you zip yourself in, and then you calibrate it, puffs up, and it pushes you up to a certain point of where you can uh, run as low as 20% of your body weight. Specific without, you know, over aggregating the injury. Tendons, ligaments, and bone respond to load to an extent. You need to stress those areas to get maximum adaptation and recovery. Oh look, we are in the Three Sisters Wilderness. So that's Ultra G Treadmill. Second one is, I briefly mentioned, is like a leveler device, bungee cord type system. You can run as low as 80% of your body weight. On a treadmill, I think they're based out of Boulder. I don't know if there's any other companies that make similar products, but you can run as low as 80% of your body weight using a bungee cord system on a treadmill. So check it out, not sponsored. Next one is aqua jogging. Probably one of the top best things you could do in terms of, you know, giving your legs a break, increasing venous return because of the partial pressure of the water in the legs, so you recover faster. Don't be deceived by heart rate. I want you guys to go by effort and time when it comes to mimicking what work routes you would have had on land. So don't think you have to do in two, three hours of everything every day types of cross training just to benefit from cross training. Now you will lose some fitness according to Jack Daniel's book. After about five days, your VO2 max starts to drop. And even if you cross train, you still lose it. But the thing is, is that you can get it back faster once you start running again. Back to aqua jogging, your heart rate's gonna be about 10 to 15 beats lower while you're doing the work on the water. So heart rate, you'll probably be out of the window. You wanna have a slight forward lean to mimic, you know, that forward lean you do with running. Best to make time go by with a lot of these is like to save your, you know, interval days like aqua jogging. I mix it up. I don't do the same cross train every single day. Maybe one day I'll bike, uh, one day I'll aqua jog, another day I'll do the elliptical. But aqua jogging is probably the biggest bang for your buck. If you have to do workouts to mimic the specific motion, right? So tempo, threshold, whatnot, um, by effort, aqua jogging is the way to go. I totally recommend it because it's very hard to get your heart rate up and feel natural with any other cross training activity, in my opinion. All right, so after aqua jogging, we have the elliptical machine, the stride machine. There is no pounding, which is a good thing. My fair share of experiences with using the elliptical, my body doesn't just, doesn't adapt as well using the elliptical. Like I said prior, 
it's hard to get your heart rate up on a lot of these things. Elliptical, I kind of can, but you're also, you have to like turn up the resistance. You have to use your arms a lot and it's not quite, you know, mimicking running. So I usually save the elliptical for like days where I'm in a week long run or a long run where my goal is to keep my heart rate um, not too high, you know, in the uh, aerobic zone. Next would be incline walking. I used to do this uh, to cross training back in the day. It will help strengthen your lower shin muscles, your foot muscles, anywhere between 9% grade and 11.5% grade when you're incline walking. Um, the muscle firing pattern between walking and running is the same. So at that point, you might as well walk. You also get good glute mean activation, which is lacking in a lot of runners. So I also do that. You can also mix that up to easy day. You can do, you know, incline walking. Yeah, when all of these don't just jump into things, right? It's a new activity that your body has to adapt to, even though the motion may be similar. So you, it is possible that you can actually hurt yourself doing cross training when you're trying to baby another injury. Next is biking. The reason why I have biking down at the bottom of the list is that it does mimic, you know, the motion of running. The top half obviously stays stable or extremely lean forward or somewhat lean forward. But the thing is, is that you actually get more type two muscle activation than type one when you're cycling. So if you're a sprinter, 400 meter, 800 meter runner, even a miler, I would probably throw in more cycle days over like incline walking, elliptical. That's where cycling comes in hand. And you can actually keep, you know, in pretty good shape with, with the bike. So I don't know if you guys have heard growing up that like, you know, what is it? Three miles on the bike is equivalent to one on land of running or a four to one. Just throw that, throw that out the window. Just go by time and effort and heart rate. And then, yeah, so that's the hierarchies of cross training. So once you get over the hump of, you know, your injury getting towards the end, you're cleared by your qualified healthcare provider to run. Then you can start gradually um, bringing running back into the routine. You don't want to just, you know, oh, I feel great. I'm going to go do my long run now, two hours after, you know, spending two, three, four weeks injured. You got to baby step into it. We can talk about the specifics per injury in other videos, such as stress fractures and stuff like that. But you just want to... Take it easy, allow your body to adapt, maybe start with 20, 30 minutes and uh, every other day and build up from there till you're you know, running how you used to before the injury happened. It is Labor Day and I gotta drive four hours back after this hike, totally worth it. I also went into a cave yesterday, footage of that will be at the end of this video if you guys wanna check it out. If you guys have any questions, comment down below. Any questions about cross training, comment down below how you guys cope with injury as well. It's very important to get over the fact, to accept the fact that you're hurt and just keep moving forward because that's the only way you can move in this world, right? Like, share, comment, subscribe. Hit the notification bell for when I post my next video. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace. What up, fam? A little bit different video for you guys. Today, I drove three hours to go find a cave. I've never been in this cave before. I've never been in any caves, period. So I got my little headlamp, I got a little flashlight. We're gonna go down into a cave called Skylight Cave. There's a name, reason why they give it that, and I'll show you guys why. I'm in cross train mode right now. Currently hurt if you guys watched my last video pop of my foot don't know what it is i think it's a bone stress reaction we'll talk about that in another video great to take you guys along hope you guys enjoy the video and this is a little bit something different so if you guys like what you see continue watching i'll do more videos like this all right catch you guys in the video down we go fam watch out for the bats It goes pretty far. I mean, we had to stop and then she just got to be small, but.